This video was requested by a lot of people and that is to talk about Amanita and autism. First, I wanted to explain a couple of things about autism that are relevant to the discussion. And that is that firstly, autism isn't a disorder and that'll be important for something here in a minute. Yes, it's still a disorder in the DSM, but I'm, I feel pretty sure there will be a day soon where that will be removed and rather that it is just part of the biodiversity of the genome of our DNA and of our brains. But none of this is actually proven. This is my channel, my, my opinion. So I want to say that when you look at all of the times that humans have been on the planet, we have only not been hunter gatherers for a very short time. And while some plants and animals can mutate rapidly, the human genome has to mutate and evolve over a very long period of time. And our brains have yet to catch up with what millions of years honed for the humans and created for us. And then when you consider that we've only been citified and lit and away from the land for 100 years, barely three generations, then we are definitely not suited for this world. And the only brain types that would happen to function well in this kind of society are going to be considered normal, which is weird to me. Because if you look at the science of it, there's nothing normal about this until we adapt genetically to live in homes, not touching the land, never putting our bare feet on it, breathing dirty air, constantly separated really far from others, disrespecting everyone, very selfishly me, mine, mine, not speaking and working issues out, ignoring the elders, forcing children to sit all day, every day in desks, in schools where what they are told they need to know is shoved into their brains. Like none of this makes sense for our biology. And so we are going to see a lot of dysfunction. Well, when you take an autistic brain and you tell it from the very beginning how it is wrong and broken and then you shame people like me, well then, I mean, we're going to have mental health issues that aren't autism. They're mental health issues from being told how broken you are and you can't fix it no matter how hard you try. And then being stereotyped that autism means uh, intellectually less than or incapable and because you're not displaying emotion the way that other people want to see it displayed, you must lack empathy. And so it's damaging when the actual, the autistic person is overly empathetic. We over empathize with every living creature to the point where it's painful because you can only take that much cruelty and pain to see the suffering of everything and know that you can't fix it or do anything about it. And our entire lives are lived trying to help other people, help end suffering, help raise their lives up to a higher standard, to, to relieve pain because we feel it. And everyone that we meet, we want to leave them better than we found them for the encounter. This is what autistic people do. So to be accused of being hateful, lacking empathy, being selfish, being narcissistic, all of those things, because we don't emote it right. Y yeah, I mean, it's very damaging to be told that you're the opposite of what you are. And so I'm not going to get into a lot of details that I could go on and on and on about why autistic people have mental health issues. And we have a very high rate of suicide. It is our number one cause of death below age 30 stress-related illnesses become the number one cause of death and then suicide becomes the second cause of death after 30 i believe stephanie bethany is a youtuber who has an amazing channel on autism and i bet she's got those numbers 
So, Stephanie, if I got it wrong, let me know. I'm going to tag her on this and get her to look at it and see what she thinks. So, our issues are not because of our autism. Our issues are because of society's treatment of us. So, we live in a constant state of panic and anxiety because we are failures in every way to meet the demands of this society and to look normal and be normal in what people want us to be. So... My last video was about invalidation trauma. Chronic invalidation can lead to an oversensitive danger alarm in the body-mind waiting to be activated by the smallest trigger. We have much to learn from autism in this regard because the humanly erosive process of chronic invalidation is constantly at work through stigma and stigmatizing micro events that can make us feel like crawling under a rock or even aliens on this planet. Whenever conventional beliefs are challenged, there is resistance from society, especially by authoritative experts whose opinions are based on established convention. Feeling judged and dismissed amplifies existing emotional regulation issues, providing a model that illustrates the cycle. Trauma is not always so extreme and is not necessarily related to single catastrophic events. It can also be associated with poverty, harassment, bullying, loss and chronic invalidation. Trauma can be perpetuated by self beratement and complicated when it involves repeated exposure over time, such as ongoing abuse, disregard, neglect, and being forced or choosing to endure a toxic or oppressive environment. Such trauma is often referred to as complex trauma. This is from the book Trauma, Stigma and Autism, Developing Resilience and Loosening the Grip of Shame by Gordon Gates.